The very mention of our next guest must strike fear in the heart of you know who right now. Because after shutting down his foundation and filing nearly 70 lawsuits against his administration, she now has an active investigation into his business dealings that could severely impact him and his family when he leaves the White House. Please welcome New York Attorney General Letitia James. Letitia, welcome to the show. Welcome to The View. Thank you. Good morning. Um, and thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, we are thrilled. Now, you know who may be working so hard to stay in the White House because he knows he's going to have to be facing a mountain of legal problems once he leaves, including your investigation into his business practices. So please give us the tea. Tell us everything you could tell us within, you know, legal boundaries, because you can't tell us everything. But is this... Is this a lot of work, you think, for you? So let me just say that um, I'm an independently elected official in New York, um, and the investigation that we are ongoing is as a result of the testimony of um, Michael Cohen uh, before Congress. Mm. And in that, Michael Cohen testified that, in fact, uh, the financial statements of the Trump Organization uh, include uh, information uh, that, uh, the, that the president, as well as um, some of his children, perhaps inflated his assets uh, so that they can get financial terms for loans and for, and for insurance co coverage. In addition to that, they deflated those same assets for the purposes of evading and or avoiding tax liability. Our investigation is ongoing. Mm -hmm. It is a civil investigation in nature. However, uh, there is a criminal investigation that's currently being conducted by the Manhattan District Attorney, Cy Vance. And there is also a, another civil investigation that cu is currently being conducted by my colleague and friend from the District Attorney, Attorney General Carl Racine. Our information, um, uh, we have, we're in the midst of taking testimony. Um, and as you know, as has been publicly reported, uh, we sought the testimony of Eric Trump. Um, and we f filed and served subpoenas upon him. Um, and as you know, um, during the campaign season, um, unfortunately, he failed to comply with our subpoenas, and we had to file a motion to compel his testimony. Um, and he objected. Wow. Uh, we uh, went into court. We were successful because right. our powers in the Office of Attorney General are broad. Um, and he came in to testify. Uh, and we are, and the fact that um, uh, the president is, the, that Mr. Trump is the president of the United States um, has really has no bearing on it, our investigation. And in fact, the election right. really has no bearing on our investigation. We will continue our investigation right. whether he's president or not. Well, speaking of President Trump, he's reportedly about to go on a pardon blitz, and he may try to preemptively pardon himself, which is to totally unprecedented. So let's start with this. Can he even do that based on your legal expertise? So he can preemptively um, pardon individuals. Um, and the vast majority of legal scholars um, have indicated that he cannot pardon himself. What he could do is step down and allow the vice president, Vice President Pence, to pardon him. In all likelihood, I suspect that he will pardon his family members, his children, his son-in-law, and individuals in his administration, as well as some of his close associates. And then I suspect at some point in time, he will step down and allow the vice president to pardon him. Now, it's important to understand he is pardoned from federal crimes, but he is not pardoned from state crimes. Last year, I introduced a bill in the state legislature, which would close the pardon loophole so that individuals such as the President of the United States would not evade justice. It's important that we have this check on presidential powers. And in the legislature, the state legislature, I'm so happy they passed that bill, and it is now the law in the state of New York. Um, President Trump cannot avoid justice in the great state of New York. So, so just to reiterate, there's no way a potential pardon for Trump or his three eldest kids would shield them from anything you're investigating. Am I right? That's what you just Correct. said, I believe. Correct. But it's, okay. a, it's important, so, okay, Joy, and then, Joy, to, yes. yeah. Joy, it's important to understand that my investigation is civil in nature. However, in the event that we uncover any conduct or activities which would mm. suggest criminal activities, 
then that would change, obviously, um, our investigation. It would change the posture of our investigation. And you also intend to prosecute him after he is out of office, correct? Uh, Joy, again, our investigation currently is civil in nature. <laughs> it is not criminal. So, in the event that we uncover oh, any activity or conduct, yeah. <laughs> if, in the event but that we uncover uncov any the conduct, civil suits? oh yes. But will you I mean, go ahead with our the civil suits? Oh. Okay. Yes, our civil suit will continue, um, whether he's president okay. or not. And so, after January twentieth right. right. at twelve o'clock, our investigation will continue, Joy. Um, Attorney General James, let me ask you this, because President Trump yes. recently mentioned you by name during a 46-minute Facebook video saying, quote, these same people that failed to get me in Washington have sent every piece of information to New York so that they can try to get me there, end quote. And recently, Ivanka Trump tweeted that your subpoena of the Trump Organization uh, five uh, for, for records, I believe, related to her consulting fees was harassment pure and simple how do you respond to these latest comments uh, from the trumps especially that comment from ivanka so in regards to her comments uh, um, the politics stop at the door of the office of attorney general i have a wonderful team of attorneys that cover the entire state of new york and our number one mission is to focus on justice and to follow the facts and the law of each and every case without fear and or favor. And with respect to uh, the rant of the President of the United States, since I've been in office these past two years, yes, my office has either led or joined to 68 lawsuits against this administration, protecting our environment, protecting immigrants, protecting the rights of women, protecting dreamers, protecting the Affordable Care Act, protecting the Postal Service, and the list goes on and on, protecting the census, standing up and making sure that we have an accurate and fair count so that all individuals will be counted, regardless, uh, regardless of their circumstance. And it's important that individuals understand, I have a duty and an obligation to stand up and to defend one thing, and that is the Constitution and the law. I took a sworn oath right. to do that. And I will continue to do that. It's important that the President of the United States understand that, that no one is above the law, including the President of these United States. And I would urge him to act more like the late John F. Kennedy, who basically wrote a book which indicated that this is a country of immigrants. Or how about FDR, who basically stood up and rescued our country at a time of financial ruin during the Great Depression? What we need from this President is an FDR moment but I doubt we will get it. And so I look forward to working with the next administration, an, in, an administration which I'm confident will follow the law. And I look forward again uh, to sending to them, along with my colleagues across the nation, attorney generals who have stood up and defended democracy each and every time. And in all of our cases, we have won about 80% of those cases. And attorney generals, particularly, I might add, yeah. Democratic attorney generals, often don't get the credit. But they should get the credit yeah. because they have been yeah. the sole backbone of, the, of democracy in these United States over these past so four years.